Robert Person is a guy who is kind of getting lost right now by the Blue Jays. He's not pitching in any kind of a regular role, but could become very important in the second half because it is still conceivable that the Blue Jays would trade one of their current five starters to get a bat. They may not trade prospects to bring in a five million dollar guy because ideally they would like to keep the payroll about where it is. And if they trade a starter would person move into the rotation. This is sky high into shallow right center. Green is there one down. You would think if they do need another starter it would either be person or conceivably Dave Steele. Yeah it sure could be and, and I think you're right on. I think that Lord Ash is still looking around trying to figure out where he can go out and get another bat. And Tony Phillips is one guy and that Dave Steele could possibly end up starting should they move one of the five starters in the rotation right now. The way the Blue Jays always did it in the early 90s was trade a prospect or two or three to get a, an established guy. But right now that the pockets aren't quite as deep, they may not want to do that. Well, the team was a lot closer, too. I mean, it's a different scenario. I mean, it's not one player away at this point. Dave Steve is down in the bullpen. He's picked up his jacket. He has picked up a towel. He has finished his throwing. Stewart with fly ball to center. The Blue Jays again to go extremely quickly. Only five pitches for Bobby Jones. Is Dave Steve coming into the game? He is. This will be his first appearance here at Skydome. After making a couple of road appearances, and the last one pretty good, four and two thirds, two runs. As the crowd started sensing what is happening, is perhaps. The best pitcher to ever wear the Blue Jay uniform, at least in terms of longevity and the number of wins and so forth. He is about to get a rousing ovation here at Skydome. was on the verge of numerous no hitters once took a perfect game into the ninth two outs in the ninth before Roberto Kelly broke it up he never won quite as many games as he should have given his stuff he seems a little bit kinder and gentler now as a 40 year old than he probably was when you caught him well I mean, he was very intense and he was so much better than the rest of the team around him he couldn't understand how everybody else couldn't play up to his level but boy was he dominant. First batter for him tonight will be Benny Agbayani, young player who just got a call up yesterday and just came in defensively last inning for the Mets. He sends a fly ball into left center. Green's there, one down. And a louder than usual cheer for a fly ball to center field. When I first caught Dave Steve, I recognized that he had. Probably the best stuff in the league. 
his fastball was devastating great movement good velocity and then he had the best slider that anybody has seen he could throw that slider anytime he wanted to Todd Pratt the battery homered off Henkin his last time up and a ground ball foul down the third baseline I would have loved to have seen Steve play for the great teams of the Blue Jays with the great defense behind them and the good offensive teams 92 93 and he pitched for those teams in his prime no telling what he would have done no one on the count on Pratt motion the same everything looks the same even though it has been five years since Steve pitched to the major leagues he's been down to the minors for three months riding the buses first at a ball then at triple a pitched awfully well in both stops built up a lot of arm strength as a starter routinely won eight innings and a grander to first funny hop for Delgado he's got time to make the play himself for out number two. Uh, Dave Steve as you said was so intense and so tough on himself and others is he feeling a little bit differently about pitching this time around. Oh it's incredible. Um, I definitely savor it and, and uh, take in a lot more than uh, when I was here previously. Well I've had a couple of great conversations with him over the last couple of years and he said you know I just didn't appreciate everything that was going on around me. I'm so competitive I never allowed myself to enjoy it. And he's gotten a second chance. Ray Ordonez the batter. Two down and nobody on here in the Mets seven. Steve got a long time to warm up here tonight. It comes in to start an inning. Obviously something that would make him more comfortable. You can see the breaking ball still has a lot of bite to it. That's a little different pitch for him now. That's more of a curveball, but he still throws that patented Dave Steve slider. The slider. You can see the difference in it. Buckle Dordonia's knees. How about that? been all Mets leading nine to nothing. Dave Steve though got the Mets in order in his first inning of work back at Scottam since 1992. Blue Jay hitters meanwhile have not been putting up any kind of a fight swinging at the first pitch a lot. Bobby Jones has set down 14 in a row. Tonight's recap is brought to you by the Ford Motor Company of Canada. The New York Mets hit Pat Henkin awfully hard. Piazza and Pratt with home runs. Eight runs allowed by Henkin. Actually the most he has allowed all season long. The only run of the night for the Blue Jays coming on Delgado's home run. Some changes now for Toronto. Kevin Brown has come in to replace Darren Fletcher behind the plate. Different kind of a look at it. Second base where Juan Samuel takes the place of Tony Fernandez. And over at shortstop, Alex Gonzalez will get the rest of the night off. Craig Raybeck in the game. And back on the mound for his second inning of work is Dave Steve, who got the Mets in order in the seventh. Brian McRae leads off the eighth. Steve got Benny Agbayani on a fly ball, Todd Pratt on a ground out, and he struck out Ray Ordonez. If Bobby Valentine leaves his regulars in here this inning, he'll face a tougher competition. Round ball to second. Quick play for Samuel as he enters the game. One down. Butterflies go away in that second inning? Yeah, they sure do. Got the emotions out of the way in the first inning. Now it's down to business. He is trying to get back 
to a starting situation. You know, Blue Jays had a deal with Steve. If they were going to bring him to the big leagues, and anybody else was interested, he could go and put to another team. And there were a couple of teams interested, and then they decided, well, we'll bring him up to the big leagues. Or I said, hey, I got an investment in this guy, and I want to see whether or not he can help. His career numbers from 1979 through 1992. Well, the Texas Rangers went so far as to tell Steve's agent Bob Lamont we want Dave to start on Saturday and that's what really forced the hands of the Blue Jays and they had a choice let him go to Texas or bring him up. Did they bring him up as insurance did they bring him up because they were worried he would go pitch somewhere else and not only somewhere else but for Texas a team the Blue Jays are chasing in the wild card race right now. I think it was a combination of things. I think Lord Ash legitimately felt like they had put a lot of time and a lot of effort into Steve, and they wanted to find out just what he had left. Plus the fact that you know you just didn't want to send him away without giving him a look pitching to big league hitters. There's a little chopper by Alfonso. Steve the flip. He's retired five in a row. Let's go to baseball tonight. Speaking of good pitching in Tampa earlier today, Greg Maddox caid eight double rays, bringing his ERA down to 1.54 en route to his second complete game shutout of the season, becoming the first 13 game winners in the majors this year. Well, Gino, Greg Maddox, he figures to start the All-Star game. He deserves to start the All-Star game. Why not? And if he does, you'll see him Tuesday night here on TSA. You'll see all the festivities Monday. Buck Martinez, Rod Smith, Pat Tapper will be there to file reports of the sports desk. The record will be there. Lots of all-star staff. Now, this has got to be an interesting at-bat for John Olerud. He saw Dave Steep pitch very effectively. Two down, nobody on as Olerud steps in, hitting 330. Dave Steep is topped out tonight at 88 miles an hour on the fastball. When he pitched in his heyday he would have been 92 93 yeah and you know what we didn't have an awful lot of radar readings yeah. back then and it wasn't an everyday thing the grounder Samuel again six up and six down for Dave Steve here at Skydome salvaging for the crowd what otherwise has been a tough night as the Mets have themselves a big time lead The batter is Sprague with Crespo with a first and one down. Nine to one Mets, bottom of the eighth. If you've just joined us, stick around because Dave Steve has already worked two innings and has retired all six Mets and will come out again to work the top of the ninth. Steve can sustain his interest in a comeback if he continues to pitch in blowouts. That'll be the real test, whether or not he can sit down in that bullpen and not get any regular work. How long he wants to hang around and do that. Getting some little reminders from Mel Queen right now. And you wonder why guys would come back financially has no concerns. And it's just the competitive spirit that still burning. Two and one the count. According to research done by the Blue Jays, only two players in the history of the game have sat out longer and then made legitimate comeback attempts. We're not talking about Minnie Minoso and that kind of thing. Five years away from the game is an awfully long time, especially for a pitcher. Well, he had a lot of elbow problems at the end of his career. And the layoff allowed his elbow to heal, and it's strong again. Sprague takes the walk. Crespo to second. Bobby Valentine starting to pace a little bit. Still has an eight-run lead. Ninth inning, it's got him in a big night for the New York Mets. Mike Piazza got it going with a home run. Todd Pratt hit a three-run homer that effectively ended Pat Hennigan's night. And Edgardo Alfonso's got three hits, and he's been on base four times, and he's scored three runs. And Dave Steve is the only guy who's gotten him out so far tonight. Mets on their way to salvaging the final game of the three-game set. The Blue Jays were attempting to get to three games over 500. For just the second time this season, matching their high watermark of the season. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. When 
this run of interleague play started with the Expos here at Sky Dome. The Blue Jays felt like two out of three, three out of four from the Expos would be good. They swept that series. And they knew that one out of three against the Braves would be a good number. Pat Henkin beat Atlanta Friday in Atlanta. And then they're taking two out of three against the Mets. I mean, that's what you try to do with series. There's Alberto Castillo pinch hitting for Piazza. What they've got to do is make a statement to the Devil Rays who swept them down in St. Petersburg a couple of weeks ago. The Blue Jays caught a break in that Rolando Arojo, who was originally going to pitch against the Blue Jays, will not. He pitched today against Atlanta because his visa is expired. Chopper back to Steve. He's got it. Has time. He hasn't lost that ability. He was always one of the best fielding pitchers in the league. Great athlete. He bounced off the mound and made an easy play of this tapper off the plate. Look how quickly he gets back, gets his balance, and throws the first for the out. Even though the Mets are winning in a round, I wonder what kind of a splash this will make with this game obviously being telecast back into the New York market on the Mets station. And a lot of national baseball writers and broadcasters back in New York. And Dave Steve's going to get a little attention after this. Yeah, he sure will. He's thrown very well tonight. Luis Lopez, the second baseman. <laughs> That's an old fashioned slider right there. Watch the bite on this breaking ball. Good tight spin. Has he got two different sliders? Oh, he's got about five different yeah. sliders, yeah. It's all basically a slider. Thrown with kind of a football spiral type of motion. One seems to break more down, and one seems to break more into the left-handed hitter. Well, another thing that he's done since he's started this comeback is he's throwing curveballs, and that's the bigger straight over the top breaking ball. When I used to catch Dave, hitters used to mumble to themselves <laughs> all the time. How does he expect me to hit that? I can remember the All-Star game. I believe it was 19. 80 in Dodger Stadium. Daryl Porter was catching him, and he was having a tough time flagging down the fastball. Was there any point when you caught him in the early 80s when, in your mind, he was the best pitcher in baseball? Oh yeah. Oh definitely. He he was so dominant, and we weren't quite as good as the team would have been later. Back goes Samuel to run it down. Two outs. And eight in a row set down by Dave Steve. None of the Mets have come close against him so far. Well, when you look at his all-star numbers, 80 was in L.A. And he had an inning of one hit pitching there. This is what he has done tonight. No walks, no hits, 27 pitches. He pitched three innings of no hit ball. Star game in 83 as a starter and was the winner in that game. Is that the one? He had a run with Dale Murphy and Andre Dawson, where he just kept striking out all the great hitters in the National League. Struck out a few of them in a row. Giving them something to think about. Jim Johnson, a former teammate of Steve's in that Obviously, the naysayers were discounted given the score. Two down, nobody on. Two and one the count to Wayne Kirby. You see that breaking ball inside ties up the left handed hitters pretty effectively. Dave Steve. The game's out of hand, but Dave Steve saw and retired all nine batters to face him here at Skydome tonight. Bottom of the ninth inning, New York nine, Toronto one. Dave Steve probably spending some time and talking to some guys he never dreamed he would 
rested with at this point in his life, but he came in and pitched the last three innings for the Blue Jays and retired nine in a row. Short should be no trouble for Ordonez as the Mets finish off the Blue Jays nine to one. Good night for Dave Steve in a losing effort and a great series for John Olerud with six hits and some fine defense for the New York Mets against his old teammates. Piazza homers, Pratt homers, and the Mets salvage the final game of the series in big time fashion nine to one over the Blue Jays. The player of the game for the Blue Jays on behalf of Nikon is Dave Steve. Three perfect innings in relief and a losing effort, but a very good effort for Dave Steve in his first appearance back in Toronto as a Blue Jay. First time he's pitched in Scottsdale since 1992. Blue Jays and Devil Rays coming up on the weekend. Dave Steve coming up after this. Time now for the TSN turning point, and we take you back to the top of the third inning. It's one to nothing Mets at this point. Still close. Pat Hemken serves it up to Mike Piazza, who goes the other way into the bullpen. A two-run shot for Piazza. His 14th of the season, Mets led three to nothing, knocked Hemken out when it was eight to nothing, and went on to beat the Blue Jays nine to one. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association for the training and development of Canadian coaches and amateur sport on behalf of TSN. Yeah, the Mets beat up on the Blue Jays tonight, but at the end of the game, the most interesting development of the night by far from a Blue Jay point of view was Dave Steve coming into the game for the first time in front of the home fans after pitching at Baltimore and at Atlanta. Three perfect innings in relief for Dave Steve, who joins us now. Dave, congratulations, and the first question we want to know is, at home for the first time, did it feel any different for you? Uh, you know, actually, I felt very comfortable out there. Um, totally different from the very first outing that I had this year. Uh, I think the more that I get out there, the more comfortable I'm feeling, and uh, I felt like I threw a lot more quality pitches today. Dave, I saw a couple of the old-fashioned sliders there, especially the one to Lopez. I thought you had a real good breaking ball tonight. Yeah, I did. Like I said, my pitches are getting a lot better. Uh, you know, not that I've been out there a lot, but uh, it just seems like the more that I get out there, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable, and that's allowing me to uh, just concentrate more and, and uh, go out there with some confidence and feel like I uh, have uh, good control and, and uh, tonight I did a pretty good control of all my pitches. What about the role you're in right now Dave you never know when you're going to pitch and all three times you have pitched it's been kind of a blowout situation. Can you continue to to enjoy all this if that continues to be your role. Well I, I think right now I'm enjoying any opportunity to pitch and uh, you know we'll just see what happens down the line but uh, for right now this is my role and I accept it and uh, you know I just need to keep sharp uh, every time that I'm out there and just uh, try to help the team any way I can. What do you have to do in between your appearances to stay sharp. Are you concentrating getting a lot of throwing in like you would if you were starting. No I'm actually trying to control the amount that I do throw I just pretty much play catch every day and I limit that uh, I, I think uh, the best thing I can do is just go out there and really concentrate when it is my turn and uh, you know, I've never really had a problem with uh, concentration so uh, the more I get comfortable like I said the, the easier it is to, to do this job and uh, the main concern is just uh, concentrating on each and every pitch. Dave what about the velocity have you noticed an improvement in the velocity since you started this. Uh, no doubt it's uh, it's improved. Um, I don't know exactly where it's at right now but uh, I'm not throwing a lot of fastballs and uh, I think with a lot of breaking balls that I am throwing that when I do throw a fastball it might look a little quicker than it really is. Well see now that's what I told you when I was catching you, you got to throw more fastballs. <laughs> You know, I was in love with my slider. But. <laughs> Dave, congratulations, and we thank you for the time. Thank you. Dave Steve, three perfect innings for the Blue Jays. He was pretty pumped up, and the, the crowd had a good time with it as well. A lot of them stayed around to the very end despite the score to see Dave Steve take the mound. Welcome back to Sportsline. A real test of the saying, a silver lining in every cloud. The cloud was a Jays outing against the Mets tonight. You had to wait for the silver lining. It came at the end. Three great innings from the ageless Dave Steve when the game was too long gone. Top of the first, Mike Piazza at the plate to face the Jays starter, Pat Hinkett, and Piazza will hit a frozen rope line drive to center. And this gives Sean Green all kinds of trouble, but oh, look out, he hauls it in. Nice recovery. And the Jays' first men in the corners went up, but Carlos Delgado will ground into the old 3-6-3. Double play to end the inning. Top of the third, Piazza at the plate again. Crushes one to right field. This time, nobody's going to bring this back, no matter what the adjustment is. 3-0 for the Mets, just an indication of things to come. Fifth inning, Mets up 4-0. Henkin takes out his frustration by throwing behind Bernard Gioki. Well, if looks could kill. 
They just injured, however. Still in the fifth. Hank and having a bad day. Hanks when the tide Brat absolutely crushes. Hits deck number two. Hankin not happy as three Mets score. Mets up eight zip. Top of the seventh, Dave Steve comes into a standing ovation, his first Toronto appearance since way back when. Steve would get the side punctuated by this strike out of Ray Ordonez. Seventh inning, Bobby oh. Jones had set down 16 straight until Carlos Delgado hits his tape measure shot to right up in the third deck. Kids chase it around, and the Jays trailed nine to one, but Jones would recover, striking out Mike Stanley. Jones goes eight innings, gave up only five hits. Mets won nine to one. Hankin drops to seven and, uh, sorry, nine and five. He adds his 14th homer. Pratt is second. Carlos Delgado is 15th. Don Martin has the postgame report. Oh, Don. Well, a definite traffic beater tonight, but those who left early missed the highlight of the game. He got it. Dave Steves' mini no-hitter. Three tomorrow all the perfect innings, even threw in a couple of strikeouts, leading to a rather unusual sight. A pitcher getting a rousing ovation, leaving on the losing end of a 9-1 score. Well, it was great. Uh, you know, um, what can you say about that? Uh, like I said earlier, you don't like to respond to that uh, in case something you know doesn't go well, and uh, they turn into booze. So, you know, I just went out there and did my job, and, you know, I'll respond to that now, and thank you. I'm grateful. Well, you know, it's tough to throw a start at him right now with our starting rotation. So, you know, but, uh, you know, nothing's etched in stone. Uh, Dave threw well tonight, and I'm going to use him in roles uh, that uh, he can contribute more. You always want more, but, uh, you know, like I said, I just have to go out there and do the best I can when I'm given the opportunity. But it was a big a big game tonight, and, uh, you know, to get it into the late innings and, and give the bullpen a rest was, uh, you know, I'm glad I kind of got there. Eight innings like that with one, with one run was... A little more than I think uh, was expected, uh, probably even more than ne was needed, but it, it's good to see. Brad, how do you feel when you hit that ball? Oh, you know, I, you know, I try to kill somebody over there. <laughs> <laughs> so the Jays' six-game home winning streak is over. The Mets salvaging the finale 9-1, dropping Toronto back to a game over 500 once again. Don Martin at the Dome for Sportsline. Next stop, Tampa. Tomorrow at Sky Dome, Guzman for Toronto. Johnson for Tampa. It starts at 7.05. Perfect innings. Too bad it was too late. The details coming your way. The miracle match, but... Uh... Oh, uh, they put on a miraculous effort tonight. But you know what? Dave Steeb, three innings, nine up, nine down. He looks good. He I looked saw very him. Good. He looked good very in the uniform. Good. He looked Even just really looking good. at yeah. him in the uniform, look good. Absolutely. It was the old Dave. Good evening. The sports report is brought to you by the new Young Lawrence Toyota, the dealership with heart in the heart of the city. Another installment of interleague play has come and gone. As far as the Jays were concerned, this year's version was much better than last year's. They were looking for a clean sweep of the Mets, their seventh straight victory at home, and old reliable Pat Hankin was on the hill. Top of the first, Mike Piazza drills one to center. Sean Green is on the run. He dives, and he's got it. What a catch. John Olrud gets things rolling in the third. Johnny O pounds one down the line. Edgar Alfonso scores on a double by Olrud. One nothing Mets. The next man up is Mike Piazza. Boom! He launches a Hankin mistake to right. That's headed for the bullpen. A two-run rip for Piazza. Three nothing. It was five nothing when Todd Pratt takes a mighty cut and sends one screaming to left. A three-run smack. Eight nothing. That was it for Hankin. To the sixth. Dave Steve makes his first return to Skydom and he gets a standing O. Carlos Delgado finally gets the Jays on the board. He crushes this Bobby Jones offering to right. That'll find the third deck. Whoa, 15 for Carlos. Steve worked three perfect innings, but it was too little too late. The Mets cruise 9-1. Here's Claude. How about Dave Steve? Well, thoughts of a Jays sweep were quickly swept away by the Mets, who tagged Pat Hinkin for eight runs on nine hits and just five innings of work. His counterpart, Bobby Jones, gives up just the one run, stranding 16 Jays at one point snapping Toronto's six-game dome win streak. When the, you know, the pitch was called, I, I pretty much felt that I was going to throw it right there. And I, and I worked both sides of the plate well. I mean, I faced him three times nine. He worked me three different ways. Um, moves the ball in and out, throws strikes, you know. He's, he just uh, he uses all his pitches. He's smart. But the 27-plus thousand on hand here at the Dome did have something to cheer about when Dave Steve made his long-awaited first appearance here at the Dome since July 29th of 1992, tossing three perfect innings. You know, I just went out there and did my job, and, you know, I'll respond to that now, and thank you. I'm grateful. Tonight, uh, I wasn't nervous at all. I felt very comfortable, and I had a good uh, warm-up session out there, and, and I brought that into the game. 
Series 6-3. They won Game 2, 15-10. Tonight it was Pat Hinkin on the hill looking for his 10th win of the year. The Jays trying to sweep the Mets. There's Pat Hinkin. And here we go. We'll pick things up in the first. Mike Piazza, fly ball, center field. Sean Green, nice diving catch right there. He got caught but did recover. Top of the third, 1-0 Mets. Check that. Make it 3-0. Mike Piazza with a two-run home run. His 14th of the year. 3-0 for the New Yorkers. Bobby Jones pitching well here in the bottom half of the inning. Striking out Alex Gonzalez. He thought it was low. Then Carlos Baerga would have a base hit. Later on, Todd Pratt with a three-run shot. His second of the year. 8-0 for the Mets. It was all New York in this one. The only good news for Blue Jay fans is this guy returning to the Sky Dome for the first time since July 92. Dave Steve looking good. He would face nine New York Mets, retire the Molly Cade Ray Ordonez. He was on fire in this one, but the Blue Jays would lose it big time. Nine to one the final. The only run coming off the bat of Carlos Delgado was 15th of the year. Jones gets the win for the Mets. They had two home runs, as you saw, Piazza and Pratt. After the game, Dave Steve said he was happy to pitch so well, and he felt great to get such a huge ovation from the Sky Dome crowd. Well, it was great. Uh, you know, um, what can you say about that? Uh, like I said earlier, you don't like to respond to that uh, in case something you know doesn't go well, and uh, they turn into booze. So, you know, I just went out there and did my job, and you know. I'll respond to that now and thank you. I'm grateful. You know, I'm having a lot more fun. I know uh, that this has a, a lifespan, whereas before I had a long term contract and just always had the attitude I was going to play forever. But, uh, you know, that's that's uh, not the situation now. And I realize there will be an end, uh, whether it's uh, this year, next year, or two years from now. So uh, I'm trying to enjoy each and every day right now and, and just, uh, you know, thank my stars that I'm, I'm back here and, and able to do this again. We're suited to bring you all the highlights here on Sports Desk. David Archer returns from the broadcast booth but hopes he doesn't get panned in his season premiere against the Lions. Pedro Martinez socks it to his former team, and the Jays may have met their match at Sky Dome, but it can't spoil a perfect homecoming for Dave Steed. Glenn Sather didn't have to think too hard about staying with the Oilers. Home. Easy. A free agent exodus begins for the Blues. The Swiss Miss tries to stay out of everybody's reach at Wimbledon, and we'll preview the teams chasing a berth in the World Cup semis. Hey, you'll love what you see here, so be sure to catch all the highlights on Sports Desk coming up next. Hold on. Pat Henkin looking for his 10th win, but in the third, a piece of Piazza, and it's a deep dish to boot. Piazza's 14th, the Mets, will take a rather commanding 8 0 lead. In the seventh, Dave Steve gets the nod. How about that? Making his Toronto debut. It's the second coming of Super Dave, and the fans rise as one for the standing O. Everybody taking note of a really special moment in Blue Jays history right there, and even the GM, Gord Ash, is up there watching it unfold as Steve pitches at Skydome six years after his first go round with the Blue Jays. Ray Ordonia is up there trying to spoil the party but he would whiff to end the inning. Steve, he's pumped up and ready to go. He's always ready, and the fans on their feet again. A great moment for the 40-year-old. Meantime, Bobby Jones firing a shutout into the seventh. There is Bobby Jones, but Carlos Delgado is going to break it up. He has got power, power personified right there. He plows into it. Third deck, not the first deck, not the second, but the third deck, his 15th of the year. But the story is this man, Dave Steve. He looks younger all the time. I think he's coloring his hair now. He looks better than he'd ever looked before. And look at Dave Steve. He throws three perfect innings. I don't care what he's doing with his hair. The man was there. Forget about that book. Tomorrow I'll be perfect. That was Dave Steve's book. He was perfect on this night. Three perfect innings. He really was the story. We should mention, too, Delgado extending his hitting streak to 10 games. But Toronto had its six-game home winning streak snapped like a twig. Meantime, Dave Steve, he really was the story. Wasn't happy, obviously, with the score. But he was happy with how he threw the baseball. Well, I felt real good out there. Um, you know, I hate the fact that we lost like we did, but, uh, you know, the, the only work I can get right now seems to be in situations like this, and, uh, you know, I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, you know, so I just have to concern myself with going out there and, and doing a job and, uh, you know, giving uh, TJ some confidence in me. His role's getting into a position where I'm not afraid to use him in uh, uh, maybe to get one big hitter out now and, and different other things. We needed to see what he can do up here and... and and he was thrown great uh, tonight. He had good stuff. He had a great breaking ball, the old slider that he always had before. 
So he's good. So there's a positive there.